Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guy. Welcome to episode 12 of my Logic Pro 10 video tutorial series. In this video, we'll take a look at the snap modes in Logic, which will help further our knowledge of audio editing. If you've used any other DAW other than Logic, such as Cubase or Pro Tools, you'll know that um, your... Uh, DAW has built-in edit modes, which essentially control how your edits snap to the grid or maybe don't snap to the grid. So that's what we'll be going over today. Logic's snap modes are a little bit different than most edit modes in other DAWs, but they essentially do the same thing. So let's listen to a little bit of this session that I've got open here. Alright, so we've got these stacked backing vocals that start at measure 116. Uh, let's go ahead and solo these so we can hear them by themselves. If you just click on the top solo button and just click and swipe down, you can solo all of them. So let's hear what we've got going on here. We are all children, children of the sun. Alright, so you can hear some background noise, some breathing, and even some uh, headphone bleed. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to trim that out of the recording to clean it up a bit. So in the previous videos, we've mostly just been using the bar snap mode, which snaps all of our edits to each uh, measure of our song. In this video, we'll go over what all of the snap modes do. And essentially what they do is they snap your edits or don't snap your edits to the grid. So in bar mode, as we used before, if we drag over this with the marquee tool, you can see that it only selects um, uh, regions by the bar at bar lines. Uh, so we're very limited to how small our edits can be. With beat, you can snap to each beat of each bar. And in 4-4 time, like at measure 122 here, there are four beats uh, per measure. At 123, I've changed the time signature to 3-4, so I have three beats per measure. So it lets us get a little bit closer to the waveform, but not quite as close as we want to get. And we're still having to snap to uh, the beats. We're not being able to kind of freehand these edits. Uh, the next one, division, lets you get even closer. If we zoom in a bit here, you'll see that my division of the grid, if we look at measure 116 here, uh, each beat has been divided into four divisions. So I have my grid set up at 16th notes. And we can get even a little bit closer to the waveform now, but we're still snapping our edits to one of the four divisions per beat. So that's divisions mode. And what if you want to be able to kind of freehand your edits? Uh, well, the next one is ticks mode. And this is essentially the same thing as slip mode in Pro Tools, if you're, if you're familiar with Pro Tools. What it does is it snaps your edits to one of the 960 ticks per beat. So you can get really, really close and you can get in, you can fine, uh, fine tune your edits. So let's just get in here and uh, trim this out as well. There we go. And we'll go to the right side of the waveforms. We'll drag in, we'll get as close as we can without cutting off the release of the note and hit delete and we can get those trimmed nice and close to get rid of any background noise. Another snap mode is smart mode, which essentially allows you to snap to small divisions smaller than the grid values, but it favors snapping to grid lines. So you can move things almost freely, but you'll see here it'll still snap to beats, uh, bars, and divisions of the grid. So it kind of favors grid lines over non-grid lines, but still lets you get in between division values. I should also mention that smart mode reacts differently based on how far zoomed in or zoomed out you are. Frames and quarter frames should be used when you're trying to snap your edits to a movie. 
uh, like kind of like what I do for my YouTube videos. I import my movie, I add my voiceover, I add the music to it, and you can move a clip or move an edit to a specific frame within the movie. And samples is another freehand uh, mode like Tix mode, except it snaps to each of your individual audio samples. So now that we've trimmed our regions, let's grab our fade tool here and let's add a quick fade out and a quick fade in to all of them. So as I showed in the previous video, you can select all of your regions and then you can just add a fade on one of them. It'll actually add a fade to all of them. Although there is one little issue that I ran into, if you try to add a fade in to all of your regions, you actually have to add them all individually. And initially I thought, well, maybe it's just because all of these regions aren't starting at the same point. So what I did is I dragged over the ones that start at the same point, add the fade, but it still didn't fix the problem. So, um, so let me know if anyone else has the same issue um, of not being able to fade in multiple regions. So now that these are faded and we've got them trimmed, let's hear what this sounds like. It should cut out all of the background noise and the bleed uh, that we had before. We are all children, children of the sun. All right, that sounded pretty good. Uh, what we need to do now is, is make a duplicate of these seven regions uh, three times, once at measure 124, once at measure 132, and again at measure 140. So what we need to do to do this correctly is we need to go back up to our snap modes and choose between a relative or an absolute grid. So down here in the list, you'll see snap regions to absolute value or snap regions to relative value. When you choose a snap to absolute value, uh, let's choose bar here. What's going to happen is the front end of your regions are going to snap directly to a bar. So as I move this over and duplicate it, you'll see that it snaps directly to the beginning of that measure of 4-4 time there. That's not really what we want because the original is actually offset from the bar a little bit. So when you use the relative value, it moves it by the value, by a bar in this case, rather than snapping to the bar. So let's choose snap regions to relative, hold option to duplicate, and you'll see that when I move this over to measure 124, it keeps that little bit of overlap, much like the overlap was over at measure 116, 117. So let's zoom out here a bit. And let's just duplicate this again. Well, that's too zoomed out. There we go. Um, let's uh, duplicate this again. Again, I'm just holding option while I drag it. So drag over all those, hold option, drag to the right, uh, drop it at measure 132, and again at measure 140. So we've duplicated this three times using our relative grid. And let's hear what this sounds like. All right, that sounded great. Uh, now that we've got those vocals nice and edited. Um, one thing I want to mention is that uh, we'll come back to working with frames and quarter frames. Eventually, I'll do a video on working with video and logic, but that'll have to wait till later. We'll also come back to snap automation to absolute value and snap automation offset. That has more to do with mixing than editing, so I'm going to kind of leave that out for the time being. In the next video, we'll go over the drag modes, which affect how regions overlap each other, fade each other, or are shuffled. Now, I don't normally plug my own music on my YouTube channel since I try to keep this channel basically tutorials and nothing else. But um, if you really like this song, the name of the song is Gamma Ray Burst 2600 AD. And it's actually part of a rock opera that I'm writing called Mayday Children. And uh, just recently, about a month ago, I released uh, the Mayday Children EP on iTunes and on CD Baby. And the album is essentially a blend of uh, rock and roll, heavy metal, 
uh, electronic elements and sci-fi elements. So if you're into that sort of thing, it's like $3 on iTunes or CD Baby. So it doesn't cost much. And it's only a three-song EP. Uh, eventually, I'll have a full 20-song album coming out probably sometime next year. But by buying the album, you are supporting the project, uh, paying the singers, and as well as supporting me. So if you like this sort of thing, uh, please check out the iTunes, CD Baby, and Facebook link that I've included in the video. So I hope you enjoyed this episode, and thanks again for watching.